She musters a smile for his nostalgic tale. Never coming near what he wanted to say, only to realize it never really was. She had a place in his life. He never made her think twice as she rises to her apology. Yes, sir. We are back and we are chilling with the Doobie Brothers because we are the DJs that like to spit it, mix it, throw it back, and dissect it. And we have a little special guest appearance for you today, making his first ever appearance on the Dissect DJs because DJ Jag decided uh, he was too cool to show up today. That's a lie. He actually had no idea we are doing this. But one of my old friends, favorite broadcast mates has joined us in the flesh give it up for greg dj g mestizo messed us what up sir hey how's it going man welcome to the dissect dj studio thank you what are your first impressions well firstly i'm honored to hold the seat Mm -hmm. in such a um you know notorious uh production Mm mm-hmm and uh, I will say I'm a little bit intimidated by the sheer wattage of light that is hitting. What's right going now. on? But I'm excited, man. I'm excited to uh, see what you got going on here. Hey, that's showbiz, Greg. It is showbiz. And you're aware of this. We have Greg is actually the only person I could say that I've actually gone on auditions with in the past. There was a True. a stretch of time where I was like, you know, let me just ch- check out this acting thing a little bit. Let me go on some auditions, and we. We went on a couple auditions. We did one where we were uh, pretending to be zombies, where they needed us to do zombies. Greg was way better at that than I was. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just good at being a zombie for some reason. But uh, He did it for Universal Studios. Yeah. Give the man his flowers. I don't know, but I didn't land the role for some reason. I know. I, they're insane that they didn't call you back for that. That was, yeah. that was, their, that was stupid. That's their loss, dude. There's no way they got a better zombie than Greg. We also one time auditioned together for like some reality show. I think it was called Fuckboy Island. No, I'm just kidding. I don't remember. I don't think they gave us a name, but it was weird because we actually had to stand in front of a room of a bunch of other dudes and like answer questions. Fun experience. Growing experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I thought we were pretty good. Oh, we we were like... We were... Went another direction. Again, never got the call. Uh, We were uh, definitely... I'd say in the top four entertaining people of like a room of like 20. It was, it was, uh, and it's, it's probably well, for the not. better. Because <laughs> we did not get the, it's probably, the yeah, it's probably for the better. Well, you know what I, re- I remember realizing after the fact? They would ask you questions like, what do you look for in a, in a girl that like you'd be interested in? And one of the, like, I think the first thing I said is, you know, like, oh, well, she's got to be smart. And I realized later, I was like, not that's not right, what they wanted to hear. Not the right program. They did not. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he wants a smart girl. Right? Yeah. And that's not yeah. going oh, well, to work here. Quality partner. Yeah. We were looking for uh, Gritty. She's got to be Gritty. And that's, we're going to like, start there. Yeah. Looking for one of them hood rats. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, that would have been, I, I would have been booked right then and there. Yeah. You know? I had to keep it real, man. I had to keep it real. That's yeah. the only way I know how to be. I want a girl that constantly checks her phone. <laughs> I want a girl that one word replies in mm-hmm. text and um, that's my life partner right there when she types something autocorrect takes over and is like did you mean to say k <laughs> but yeah, yeah me and greg go way back all the way back to our days at cal state fullerton where he was my co-host on titan radio which uh was the radio station of our alma mater of cal state fullerton and we hosted a show called the newcastle experience drink it in smooth and they would basically give us the keys to a full-on uh radio station it was kind of intimidating but we just had fun with it and i of course was trying to make like a bunch of sound effects happen so i was using like every outlet they had for like i had my laptop connected i had a cd of instrumental beats in the background and uh i would always prep extensively for what we're going to talk about for the show and Greg would show up five minutes before the show started and was like, what are we talking about today? Actually, you know what? Don't tell me. I'll just, I'll wing it. Yeah. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no preparing for me. You know, I just gotta just give it to me straight. 
and I'm gonna give you something back, you know. Greg, legendarily one of just the best wingmen ever, just in that sense alone. Like you could throw him as your side host on a radio show, and he'll just be able to be like, yeah, you know, I'll figure it out. Oh, and he always did. It also helped that just knowing that there was exactly zero listeners uh, <laughs> to our show, so the pressure was not. I know, remember, not I remember looking at the analytics of the show, and they would have like it would like be a bar graph, and it would have a number kind of like you know, and we're like, it says yeah, it says it's, thirteen. You, does that mean thirteen people? Do you think are listening to this? We had like a. A time slot of like 11 a.m. on Tuesday. So I don't know how many people are listening to Titan Radio. I wasn't even really aware that uh, we had a, a radio station at the college until we were actually on the show. But, yeah. you know. That's probably why they didn't really question us at all. They're like, oh, you want to you want to be on the radio? Sure. Here's a, here's a, here's a booth. It was great experience, though. Like no I, questioning at all what our programming <laughs> was. Like, we really could have been. We could have done whatever we, we wanted. Yeah. There was stuff. nobody overseeing the operation. No. And I can say in my resume now that I've uh, ran my own uh, radio show in a legit station. So if for nothing else, it gave us that. And we were then supposed to parlay that into a uh, podcast. We discussed making a podcast happen at that time. And this was like, what, like 12 years ago at least? And like that. yeah, and I never really made it happen because I wanted us to be able to have a call in feature the way our radio show did. And I couldn't figure out how to make that work. So we just kind of never did it. And I kick myself at least every 12th day because we could have been podcasting this whole time, Greg. It was right there for us. Yeah. You know, man. We could be Joe Rogan and, and Bill Burr right now and Bill Simmons, the best podcasters who started. Back in the early days of the advent of podcasting, but it's all right. We finally got there. We made it full circle. Instead, we worked at Chase Bank. <laughs> That's yeah, I, th I, I think you did. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I just had a passion for retail banking. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good avenue. So we should actually address the song that we're doing today on today's episode of the Dissect DJs. We're back to dissecting some jams. Justin will be back uh, eventually whenever he actually wants to make the visit out to the the fortress. But uh, for now, Greg, who's visiting in California, had to get him on the show. So we decided to cover one of the iconic jams in our life that is a, a very special bond that we share. And it is the Doobie Brothers. What a fool believes. Oh, I, thought you were about to, I thought you were about to hit play on it. No. We already played a good amount of it. We went we like... We went through the whole first we verse. So, yeah, you heard no, it. We get it. I'm sure they We did it. We'll, yeah. we'll break down some lyrics in just a second. But what is the first thing that this song conjures up in your brain whenever you hear it? Oh, my God. Uh, well, there was one day that we, this song followed us. We went to like four different places, four different restaurants, bar, whatever it was, and heard this song at every single spot. And uh, it was the greatest day of my entire life. We had a legendary day with this song. I'll try to recap it as best I can. So first we were at my house, and we were just playing some like old school jam, some like some funk noise, just to like just mm -hmm. get us hyped for on the day as we are known to do. And one of the songs that uh, was we played was this song because it just gets us moving, it gets us in that retro spirit that we love to be in. Mm -hmm. And then we went driving to go somewhere, and while we we're in the car, we we're listening to the radio. Sure enough, the Doobie Brothers pop on the radio. We're like, dude, this song is our fate right now. This is, yep. we are meant to be what a fool believes. And then I think we went to like a grocery store to like pick up something. Like yeah, that. I think it was like Ralph's or something like that. Yeah, definitely a Ralph's. Um, and Which is important to know. This is, yeah, this is, that was an important note to the story because Ralph's, you know, plays only the. the Hottest jams. Yeah, shout out to Ralph's, dude. From back in the day to I'm today. I'm not mad at what you're doing right now. Music Never. Game. You should write a note to Ralph himself and let him know his grocery chain. It's doing good business. It's doing good things, including playing the Doobie Brothers. Then we ended up going to a bar later that night, and guess what? Doobie Brothers, what a fool what? believes, starts jamming all throughout the entire arena. Yeah. And then I feel like there was even another one later on. There was. Yeah, I just think that. I mean, we both love that song. Um, yeah. And how, but that day, how could you not? that day, yeah. And how could you not love this song? It's so. Well, come on. We'll, we'll break it down. But you'll you'll uh, if you're not if you're not in love with this song yet, 
hopefully you will by the end of this uh that show. is our mission and then of course it became like a go-to like then from then on anytime we hear it in life we just send it to each other we're known to send uh, uh random songs like that we have that are uh, we yeah, bond over mostly how we communicate i feel like it's every that, now and then we'll yeah. write our own words but usually it's just a link to a song it's it's this in like easy lover by phil collins oh, and philip bailey dang that's another one i was thinking of yeah that's one of the ones but it's all right yeah there's a lot of songs in the world maybe do we do that next yeah you haven't done that yet, right? No, we haven't. Okay. No, I've been saving it for you. God, you damn easy lover, dude. Yeah. Easy lover. You gotta hold up the damn feeling. Easy lover. You get a hold on you, believe it. If I can get Greg to hang around for another episode, we, we will break that one down next. Oh, boy. You know, he just made dinner plans on me cool. while we were recording. I think Ryan's going to slash my tires so I can't leave. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the fun thing about this song, I think, in doing it on a dissect level is I've been jamming it my whole life, but I actually have no idea like what he's saying at all. So we're about to find out what this song is about together. I do know a little bit about it. I know a little do we? Bit. Yeah, but I don't know all the lyrics. I will tell you that all I really know is, Who come from plum, mer, 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 mer. And then, of course, Lee. I don't even know the words. All right. You got there. You struggled, but you got there on the on the high note. Good job. Buddy. I cannot reach Michael McDonald's high note. Come on. Sure if you can. I wish. I wish. So this song was actually written by Michael McDonald and Kenny Loggins, who is another legendary artist from this general sort of disco pop area of the like the late 70s, early 80s. So actually, what year was this song put this out? It has to be like 84. Guess. 85. Let's say 85. Where the hell is it? Usually the it tells me right at the top of Genius Lyrics, which is like letting me down right now. 1979. 79. What was your guess? 85. 85. No, yeah. yeah. Wow. 79. 79 felt like a better guess to me. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's still got elements of disco in it, you know? It's like kind of... You feel yeah. the 1979 as you hear it. It's like it's coming out of the speakers. Yeah. It's starting to get on that like Dar like Hall and Oates type of wow, Hall and dancey Oates. funk. Yeah, where it's not disco, but it's like. Um, but you can dance to this. But it's it's a, it. It will gonna move. get you moving. Okay, so let's break down the lyrics a little bit. Let's do it. He came from somewhere back in her long ago. Okay, that's oh, uh, that makes sense. Back in her long ago. What a great way of saying that like he was a person that like exists in her past. You know, like this is a person that was like important. It doesn't quite make sense. Great. But I like if that. If we're going to be a grammar Nazi. It's but not a grammatically correct sentence, but I get what he's saying. And yeah. that is that is the beauty of a, a good sentence. I'll take it. Um, the sentimental fool don't see. I'm not going to try to say in a singing way because I don't even know what these lyrics, how they operate. Though. The sentimental fool don't see. Trying hard to recreate what had yet to be created once in her life. So it wait, feels wait. like. Let's rub this. Can you, can you hit me with that one more time? The sentimental fool don't see. Trying hard to recreate what had yet to be created once in her life. So That's it feels awesome. like. Okay. So he exists in her past, right? And he. She's. He. He's referencing him as a sentimental fool. So he has these like loving memories of this girl, right? And he's trying to recreate what had yet to be created once in her life. So that part actually confuses me a little bit because was it created or was it something that had never been created? Well, he's a sentimental fool. I got to pull these lyrics too so I can see. Yeah, you follow um, him along with me. Because Bring them up on the old iPhone or Galaxy wireless, whatever you have. I don't yeah, know. I have access to the internet. So he actually has Cricket. Cricket. Yeah. Um, I think that's a phone that people... don't see trying hard to recreate what had yet to be created once in her life. She musters... Wait, wait, wait. I, I, think we're, I think that's part of really the next phrase. When she So what had yet to be created once in her life, she musters a smile for his nostalgic tale... Mm -hmm. Never coming near what he wanted to say, only to realize it never really was. What poetry, man! Wow, man! What like, a, what a wordsmith, I Kenny Loggins and Michael McDonald. Michael I mean McDonald, yeah. Doobies, the Doobies as a whole, just fucking spitting fire and poetry right out of the gate. 
there's a lot right there and i i really want to nail exactly what they're trying to say with that okay he came from somewhere back in her long ago it's somewhere from the past somewhere right? from her past yeah okay, and she's um trying to create something that's never been created create some situation that's ever been created in her life she must musters a smile for his nostalgic tale that feels to me like she is kind of like she she senses that he is like here for the nostalgia act he's trying to recreate a magic that it sounds like maybe she never really felt exactly what he did so she musters a smile she's smiling like like this is like you meeting up with a girl in your past so you create a meeting and then maybe in your mind, if you're like the man in the situation, you're like, oh my God, like this is, let's like create that magic that I always felt long ago. And like, maybe this is a whole new magic that we can create. And maybe she's not on the same page with that. Maybe she's just kind of musters a smile. Like she's there to be nice. She's there to like, just check in with you. Maybe have a little catch up, but maybe she's not exactly on the same page, but she musters a smile about it. And then it says, never coming near what he wanted to say. See, so he was hoping that she was going to be like, oh, my God, we have been soulmates for years. And, like, we just needed the opportunity to, to find each other and, and see it. And I guess only so. to realize it never really was. You think yeah, that's – is, nice. is that what you're reading from it? Yeah, I feel like it makes sense mostly. Um, there's definitely some nostalgia. We might need to keep rolling with the next one to put the whole story together, you know? Because I feel like we're, we have pieces of the puzzle, but I can't really tell what. All right. Let's keep it rolling. Yeah. Stopped it later. We went oh, further yeah, than that earlier because it went to she. Out of place it is. We can still discuss those lyrics. I just want to hear you attempt to hit that. Note. She had a place in his life. He never made her think twice. I don't. I actually don't remember how he says it. I'll go back. I'll I'll play that part again. That was good. That was a good attempt. I'm no doobie brother, Gregory. All right. Let's see. There it is. a little that i remember now like feel it i'm it. like this is a little bit of a sad song this guy's blind to the fact that uh obviously she's she's leaving or she doesn't want to be with him she had a place in his life he never made her think twice as he rises to her apology anybody else would surely know he's watching her go everybody sees it except for him oh what man the everybody believes. sees it that's why it's what a fool believes uh, yes no wise Michael. man has the power to reason away what seems to be is always better than nothing, nothing at all. He'd rather believe there's something there with her than to see the truth of the fact that you messed up, buddy. How many people do you think this rings true with? And like maybe doesn't even like, I mean, I never knew exactly what this song was talking about. And so many guys, I think, and probably girls too. I don't think it's like, you know, just like adjacent to one gender or the other. But it definitely feels like something that is like rings true I think in many, maybe even most people's past. A lot of people. I guarantee you, I don't know. It's just a good song. Regardless of honestly what he's saying in the song, the melody is freaking fire. I, that's but, what makes you not – it coats the fact that there's actually a little bit of a sadness to the song. Yeah. But if you listen to it with that in mind, you it also comes out in it. Like you can hear how it's sort of a longing for something song. And and because it's like such a fire dance song that like gets people like moving, 
there is an element of nostalgia with it where you can have fun for that moment while it's in your mind in that nostalgic verse that makes you just enjoy the memory that you have and really what you want the memory to be you know sometimes people like hear a memory think of they think of a moment of the past and they kind of have rose tinted goggles with it you know they're like how they view it how they remember it how they think of this time with this person maybe they think that there was like a thing that a connection that was there and they're fond of that they enjoy the experience of being like you know what that was such a good like we had a real special thing that maybe was very much of a one-sided tunnel but True. When you hear the Doobie Brothers and the way that keyboard is just jamming and it makes everybody move for that moment, it's like, let me just jam to this memory as I like it to be, as I like to have it be created, and I choose to remember it. And sometimes it takes that meeting with a person, as this sounds like it is, where they have to muster the smile to meet your nostalgic enjoyment of it, to throw some cool water on it, to be like, you know what, it's not actually oh shit was that all up in my head you're like yeah i always jam to it the way the doobie brothers jam on a keyboard you know yeah i feel like this dissect actually just makes you sad about the song but it's so good it's so good hey welcome to being a dissect dj greg Gosh, it's not dude, all this is sun and flowers and happiness sometimes we cut to the real we get dude. real with uh, it i'm gonna need to bring a box of tissues for this one the next verse is pretty where are you gonna use the tissues i don't know <laughs> quick, on quick, my quick, quick. Johnson sorry that was I just wanted to say the word Johnson yeah I love yeah. good slang terms for dick man that's it's one of my favorite Dude. things about the English language yeah wow. what's your what's your favorite slang term for penis let's just get off that exit from what a fool believes wow. and let's just cut on dick wanna Avenue keep, real fast keep going down the down the highway just give me one stop. Just give me one it's dark on that exit there's no lights <laughs> What's your favorite slang term for dick? You want to be a dissect DJ here? Just took a real dark turn. I don't feel comfortable. Um, I don't know, man. Johnson's good, though. Johnson's a good one. Uh, Schwanz. Just, I like Schwanz. Schwanz, Schwanz yeah. is a good one. It makes me think of uh, Ryan Gosling. Oh, yeah. He, and, did, uh, he did. Yeah, Schwanz is good. And he's like, my Schwanz is in your face. If you don't have an issue with that, we got a problem. We got a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's one of our favorite movies, too. That's a good one. What's it called? Crazy Stupid Crazy Love. Crazy Stupid Love. Yeah, that's a great that's movie. Great. That's cool. Excellent Ryan Gosling performance. Um, okay, so you were talking about the next verse having like a whole... Um, where were we? Yeah, it gets a little... Do you want to go over it? Yeah, the next one. Well, it's the chorus again. Okay, so we picked up... We, we Where we left off going over the lyrics was... She had a place in his life. He never made her think twice. As he rises to her apology... Yep, then anybody else would surely know. Then he's watching her go, and then it's the chorus again. But what a fool believes, he sees. No wise man has the power to reason away. What seems to be is always better than nothing, and nothing at all. So yeah, like you were saying. Like, you gotta he, believe. He's, he's more in his like in belief his and like what's, what's real, you yeah. know? You know what, I, real quick on that, I feel like that, is something that exists a lot of times when say there's somebody that you know maybe you were even just friends or maybe you have a real relationship at some point with and then maybe they live far away they live like across the globe in a different state something like that and you kind of romanticize the idea of maybe having a meeting with them again and almost you feel like the sparks that maybe were at your peak you would you felt would immediately like be there. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, maybe you meet up with them and that's not the spark that's there at all, you know? Maybe you're different people at that different stage in life. That could have been like five, 10, 15, 20 years ago, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Wait, I, feel... I changed my answer. What's that? Wang, I actually prefer Wang <laughs> <to> response. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I knew you were here to play the yeah. dissect game. I like the kind of cultural Cultural, cultural significance of it, yeah. Penis. Wang is good. Wang's a good one. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Because Wang is like, no one's taking the Wang seriously. Nobody's ready for Wang when no. it comes out. Like if somebody, I think that's the actual sound. If somebody nicked, out. if Wang. somebody, like, 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 let's say somebody just kind of like brushed their arm down and you know just caught the end of it, 
And you were like, oh, my wing. Like, nobody's ready for you to say that. Bro, you just elbowed me in the wing. Dude, you got me in the in the dub. The dub is a new one. The dub ang. All right. Uh, we should probably keep this going because I want to get back on the freeway and off of Dick. No, let's stay on Schlong exit. Street. Schlong 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 Ave. Schlong Ave. Uh, <laughs> in the uh, corner of Schlong Ad and Peterson Drive. Schlong and Wang. Peterson Drive. Uh, uh, um, I don't like so. it when they put a name on it. Like, other than Johnson and Dick. I guess Dick is a name. How come nobody ever calls it my Richard? Where'd that? Well, that should be a thing, right? There's too many Richards out there. It makes it feel like you have a, a sophisticated Johnson who, like, you know, this is my studies Richard. at night for its doctorate and is writing a thesis statement on how subculture is actually arguably making a difference in humanity for the worst. I don't know. It's just a bunch of Those are dirty buzz just terms. looking around at the room and naming things you see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Remote. Lamp. Lamp. Glasses. Subculture. <laughs> Painting of a man breakdancing, which is, by the way, an art in the corner that nobody ever sees. But I, I put it. That. Yeah. I saw that. And I was wondering what the significance I of that was. I actually think eventually I'm going to replace that one with this because this one's starting to be in the background of most. The, uh, the rapper's collage. But that one's in the corner. That I think eventually I'll make the switch. I'm big on the aesthetic of my entire room looking good, so I decorated that corner, but so it's off camera all the time. So. Nice. When you see the breakdancing guy in the background of the left chair, then um, you will know that that was just Ryan redecorating. All right, we got way off Avenue on Schlong Boulevard so um, yep. and Wang Street. So where were we? I, I was talking about how it could reference like the – like longing you might have for a person in your past and then how actually meeting them might be a different story. So then it went to verse two. We haven't played verse two, right? You're right. Uh, or did you have another bit to throw on that? No, no, we haven't done verse two yet. Okay. Put your vipers on for this next portion. I just see that they're there. So I kind of want you to throw oh, my vibes. Yeah. Put the vibes These on guys? as I play the next verse. We're going to jam while Greg's going to throw his vibes on. It's game time, dude. Game time. <laughs> There's a lot of there's a lot going on there, man. You were actually following along with the lyrics as yeah. you were singing it. That's awesome. She had a place in his life. He never made her think twice. All right, all right. Actually, like like poeticize it a little bit. Don't just like run through it because we don't all know that. Like I said, one of the fun things about the song is like I don't know what he's talking about the whole time. So we're trying to like figure that out mm -hmm. for the first time ever, probably a little bit. Poeticize it. Okay, let me get my poetry mm -hmm. voice on. Get your poetry voice. She on. had a place in his life. He never made her think twice. As he rises to her apology, anybody else would surely know he's watching her go. He's watching her go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody else would surely know except for him. He doesn't want to watch her go, right? So that's why this is such a painful experience for him. Because... Who wants that? Dude, who wants to be left by someone? That sucks. That but they were, were they never together, I don't think. <laughs> that's why he's what, what a, you that impression because that's what a fool believes he believes no, there was something there he just doesn't want to see her go I think this whole thing is about him which uh, you know we've all look we've all been in situations where we're like kind of willingly ignoring what we see right in front of us you know because we don't want to mm -hmm. believe it 
it's I'll give you an example of that real quick. Yeah. It's kind of like if a person always doesn't have time for you and you're and they're always giving you an excuse as to why they can't hang out, why they're busy. If you are really interested in that person and you're like invested, like you will take all of their excuses at face value. You'll be like, they just have that going on and there's that going on. And you're going to want to like believe all the reasons that they're giving you to not see them. And it's so much easier. Like if I was telling you about somebody and I kept explaining to you about how, oh, she doesn't want to see me because she got this going on. And now then she had this one. Like it'd be so much easier from your standpoint to be like, Bro, I don't think that she's trying to see me. I think she's yeah. trying to make excuses. And it's so much easier to step when you step outside. So I remember t- t- teaching myself that long ago, being like, look, always remember if somebody wants to see you and they want to hang out with you, they will. They will find a way to make it do it, even though they might be a really busy person in life. So if I had to like reteach myself that over time in uh, different avenues. But uh, yeah, that's like, that's, I think the example of this is just like, that is what a fool believes because you keep wanting to believe what is ultimately impossible as possible. And that's what a fool believes. The Doobie Brothers knew. The Doobie Brothers knew. They knew what the deal was. They did. They tried they to did. teach us all back in 1979. We all should have listened. We should have taken notes. Well, Here, take this notepad. Write it down. Michael McDonald is trying to teach us all. He's trying to teach everybody. Every single one of you all. Learn from this man. He doesn't just, he's just a dude with golden pipes. He's teaching us poetry. He's teaching us life lessons. You see that right there? Right in there. Right where the sunset goes over the river. You know what I mean? That was a good, that was a good little passionate rant there, my friend. I have those sometimes. And yeah. you know what? You know who brings them out most? Michael. The doobies. McDonald's. The doobies. And the doobies? The doobs, as I call them. Actual doobies or the doob- doobie brothers? Both. Both, dude. The same time. Let's finish this out. <laughs> All right. Doobies, take us home. Dude, we should all be thinking Michael and Kenny. All the Michaels that have, I mean. Everybody that's ever been named Michael. Michaels are amazing. Or anybody that ever has been named the Doobies. Michael Jordan, Michael Johnson, St. Michael, Michael. Michael Longfellow. Michael Longfellow. New new cast member of Saturday Night Live. I actually have a cousin named Michael. Cousin Michael. Throw him in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Michael is what Brian refers to his pee pee as. Michael. Pee pee. Okay. Well, if we're going down Johnson Street again, that's my least favorite one. Pee pee. Yeah, I hate that. That that just it oh, you're, like. Are you too mature for pee pee? Yes. Gosh, dude, grow up. Yeah. Any guy that refers to their own Wang as a pee pee probably has a small Johnson, and that's the schlong and short of it, you know. Wow. How did this Doobie Brothers episode just turn you into know? a long conversation about? That Dicks. was your doing, sir. You're I was, right. I was a passenger in your car. Yeah, uh, and I just drove us right down Penis Avenue with your no favorite. remorse. You just took the keys out and turned the headlights off and said, this is where we're going to stay. We're going to get a hotel Yep. over we're, here. This is where we're moving. In Peterson Inn. Is Peterson a, a, a dick term? That's, I just I, no, it's I not. feel like I just That's made just a, that. It's just a respectable you know it, it is name. now. I made it happen. Yeah. I feel like. I always like ones that like uh, the it, when there's a slang term for dick that's just like a name, like Dave, David, no. dude, my David right now. <laughs> I don't know about Dave. I'll workshop that one. We can yeah, all we'll workshop. workshop. Um, David and Peterson. Okay, so when we uh, finish up, I don't know how familiar you are with how the DJs that dissect go, but what we need to do is uh, slap this out. Out of five slaps, what are we giving? The, uh, so five. Five being the best. Five being the best. That's a no-brainer for me, dude. All right, all right. Yeah. Slap it out. Give me the slaps. Are we done at the same time? No, you go. You uh, do yours. <laughs> oh, I, I feel like that was six. That was 
six. That's bro. a first ever on the dissect DJs. That's a keeper. Giving six slaps. Why? Give me a, just a quick rundown of like what the song. What um, what does what does a fool believe about what a fool believes? I mean, dude, you what just, does a Greg believe? You hit play, and then you tell me. You come back to me. Yeah. I feel like this this song is. I mean, we didn't even get into this, but the way it builds, the way the melody builds, builds, just takes you on that ride up, and nearly never lets you down until the end. Honestly, when it stops and you're sad, I think it's a fantastic tune. And it's one that uh, really I never want to turn off when it comes on, honestly. No, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's like when it starts to play, you're going to be like, you know what? I got time for this right now. Michael, I got time for you in my life. Let's. Yep. And as evidenced by that one day when it kept following us, like we never hit skip on it. Nice. There's other times where that might happen in life where a song keeps yeah. playing and you're like, bro, I'm so sick of this song. Like we were ready for it every single time. True story. All right. With well, that in mind, I'm going to give it – Doobie Brothers, what a fool believes. I'm gonna go. I can't. I can't. No, I got to. I got to. I got to give it five. I, you know, I gotta say, if Greg wasn't here, if this was a DJ Jag and Castle affair, I might have uh, dropped it down a notch. But our history with it, your enthusiasm to give it a six slaps, I can't. Who am I? Who am I to stunt the Doobies and who Michael McDonald you? and Kenny Loggins? On the five slapper they deserve. So, on, bro. yeah. Come on. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. This is Wang and Shvan signing off. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next Saturday night. Yeah. I'm going to get Greg back on here now that he's familiar with the dissect DJ setting. I'm still getting used to it, but yeah, will, I like it. Yeah. And Make we will something. dissect accordingly. Till then, Greg, let me teach you how we get out of here. All right? I'm assuming the front door. <laughs> it's actually the back. Oh. On three, me and you. Hit them with a next, okay? You ready? Put on the vipers for it. Get right in the camera's face about it, all right? All right. What are we doing? (laughs) (laughs) All right. For the Dissect DJs, I'm Castle. That's Greg. Ready? Yes, what are we doing? (laughs) Next! We'll work on it. We'll work on it. It's new.